Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin. Hasbun Allah wa Nima al Wakil. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And ye though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cap runneth over, and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Assalamu alaikum. It's Tuesday, the 10th of October. Welcome to Johnny's Bite. Last week and the week before that, I drew your attention to the fact that the Kennedy and Japan presidential primaries campaign team and Dr. Baumier's campaign team led by Chairman Wun to me were trading accusations and allegations on who killed Ahmed Swale. Put his picture up there for me. Journalist Ahmed Swale. Then this week, towards the end of the week, we had that rude invasion of UTV by hooligans and hoodlums identifying with the New Patriotic Party. Well, the New Patriotic Party has come to apologize. But the whole point is that this gentleman you see on your screen, he had his picture put up on Net2TV by Kennedy Ohinia Japan, MP for Asin Central, who wants to be president of the Republic on the ticket of the NPP. He was under witness protection by the Ghana Police Service. He was gruesomely murdered. The police have not had the presence of mind, dignity, or sense of duty to invite Honorable Kennedy Japan to appear, to even serve as a witness in the traveling, trying to unravel the mystery of the murder of Ahmed Swali, who was under witness protection. Then you heard Chairman Wun to me on behalf of the Dr. Baumia campaign say that if you threaten me again, I will report you to the, to the police because it is the same way you threatened other people like Ahmed Swali and many others who we do not know who have died. Kennedy Japan would now say that, oh, go and ask Dr. Baumia to tell you who the killers of Ahmed Swale are because he is the chairman of the police council. So we are talking about the murder of a young Ghanaian who decided not to steal, not to do Sakawa, not to do 419, but decided to practice journalism in his country to expose corruption and rot. He has been killed. The Zongo communities are quiet. The Muslim fraternity that he belonged to are quiet. Civil society organizations are quiet. People who say they love justice and they, they want peace and justice to be in tranquility are quiet. And we are now discussing it on a political platform. You killed Ahmed Swali. You killed him. You didn't kill him. You killed him. Go and ask this. Go and, and the Ghana Police Service, IGP Dampari is watching. I love IGP Dampari, but I'm saying that up until now, if he's not able to invite the two gentlemen to appear to give him the evidence that they claim they have regarding the murder of Ahmed Swali, then there's a problem. It means that the police is being selective. If Johnny Hughes says, Sixtus, you killed Babana. And Bab uh, Sixtus says, you know, Johnny Hughes, you killed Babana. I'm sure the IGP would have invited us as of yesterday or two weeks ago. The state, we would not even finish the statement. They will come and pick us up in Rambo style. This is a test for you, IGP Dampari. If he's not watching, call him. I know that the, all the big people, they watch the Johnny's Bite. Tell him that Ghanaians are watching. And I won't stop talking about this. One more time, put a man's while his picture there. They killed him in cold blood. He was under witness protection, under the protection of the police and the court of this republic. He was killed. What has the chief justice said about it? What has the police said about it? What has the president who is supposed to, who sworn out to protect our citizens, what has he said about it? Ahmed Swale's blood will be on everybody's hand. And I'm speaking passionately about it because those of us who want to unravel corruption, this is the way. And, and by the way, Kennedy Japan has had cause to put my picture same way, like I'm, I'm putting it on TV, like this, on UTV before. He sat in front of Roland and said, he doesn't know me. You don't even know me and you are insulting me and put my picture up. <laughs> Let me not speak my gun. 
Now, the second issue I want to talk about today is the those guys who go around clamping vehicles. Put the picture up there. I don't know why they do it. Sometimes you are in the car. You have not left. You just park for a second. Maybe you have a problem <clears throat> or you're waiting for somebody or, or whatever. Two minutes, one minute, three minutes. They come, they clamp it Rambo style. Then they quickly write the receipt. Ask them, ah, what kind of hunger is pursuing you people? Who sent you? They say, oh, our boss. Why are you doing it? They say, because you parked. I said, does it occur to you, and this is not my vehicle, because if, if you, I, I won't park where you want, you want to clamp it. But you see, vehicles are machines, and they have genuine problems. And I'm, sure, I'm not sure I'm alone. Yesterday, somebody called me, and he was very livid. That, ah, I had parked. My car had a problem. The engine was overheating. I was inside the car. I was just getting out to open it to check what's happening. I had gone to the boot to pick out the coolant. Then they clamp their vehicle. Same thing happens at the airport. They say there's a notice there that you can't park more than 10 minutes. If you like, go to the airport where the signage is. Park for even two minutes, they'll come and clamp it. Even two minutes, they'll clamp it. So then the question you ask yourself is, who actually checks for the 10 minutes to elapse? Who does that? The assemblies are looking for ways to rip people off their monies. And they use this nonsense to rip people off their monies. It's not fair. I agree, you want to make money. You want to generate intelligently generated funds. On the front page of the daily, daily graphic today, Professor Gboping is talking about the fact that we need to utilize the taxes well. These things that you deduct, the assemblies are still dirty. Your gutters are still choked. Your roads are still not fixed. Yet you come and collect property rate and business operation permit shamefully. 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 And they, they use some dirty ovens, then, then they come and pack, and then get out six, seven of them, they come and clamp the vehicle. You see the vehicle, you... I, the vehicles are not even roadworthy. The vehicles, Mr. Buzi had DVL, the vehicles that they used to to do these operations and clamp, they are not roadworthy. You should be clamping down on them too. You should be clamping down on them. We're just misbehaving because we have power and authority. Why do we do that? <clears throat> now, please pull up the MPP letter for me. The new patriotic party has apologized and have disassociated themselves from the nonsense that happened at UTV. But this is the genesis of the whole matter. It's a letter dated the 19th of September 2023, addressed to the general manager of Despite Media, Ship House Accra. It says, Reform United Showbiz Program. So we are not sure if it's an advice, if it's a directive, or if it's an order. Reform United Showbiz Program. I trust this message finds you well. I've been directed by the leadership of the New Patriotic Party to draw your attention to some recent observations we have made regarding the prime time program United Showbiz. Currently, United Showbiz appears to be operating as a platform that serves the interests of the opposition National Democratic Congress. It is evident to any discerning viewer who has followed the program in recent weeks that its, its content has significantly deviated from its original purpose and relevance. The program now frequently features intemperate language, unconstructive runs, and outright insults directed at the presidency by panelists. This has become a recurring pattern that raises the question of whether the show has inadvertently transitioned into a political talk show. If such a trans Information is indeed the case. It is imperative to address the imbalance in representation, granting the new patriotic party a fair and equitable platform to ensure objectivity, fairness, and equal play. In upholding your station's duty of care towards the public, 
it is incumbent upon the management to facilitate equal representation rather than turning blind eye to this issue. A thriving democracy thrives on diverse viewpoints to propose and debate policies, while we in the MPP welcome a, matter, uh, a, you know, a mature conversation about the economy and its related challenge. We cannot condone the erosion of public discourse to such a lamentable level. This is not merely a matter of politics or criticism. It pertains to maintaining respect for the presidency and a sense of responsibility towards one another. The United Showbiz program has in recent times witnessed an unwarranted surge in disparaging comments targeted at the president, which has raised concerns among a section of the populace. The program subjected the vice president, Dr. Baumia, to ridicule and criticism in the last few episodes. Proud to that, the program targeted our Shanti Regional Chairman Wuntumi, the manner in which the, these individuals were treated often without a fair chance for rebuttal, raises questions about the program's intention, giving the impression about its metamorphosed um, into a political show. It's disheartening that this program has strayed from its intended path and ventured into the realm of a political and propaganda to masquerade as an entertainment show. This sudden departure from the established norms, right? of television entertainment is puzzling, given the global television landscape where popular shows have refrained from entangling themselves in political matters. Thank you for your anticipation, and cooperation, and consideration. Yours sincerely, William Nyako. Uh, William Yamwa, he is the Director of Finance and Administration, copy to CEO of Despite, owner of Despite, and then also to the Executive Producer of United uh, Showbiz. I can tell you on authority that UTV is not the only re recipient of such a letter. I can tell you on authority that top, the top echelons of the new patriotic party have not only engaged UTV. Yesterday, Mr. Richard Ahiagba, my good friend, confirmed to me on 3FM Sunrise that they have engaged our own management here at Media General. So UTV is not alone. Now, I asked the question. Show me Article 162. I asked the question. The MPP is not in short supply of lawyers. The National Secretary of the NPP is, is a lawyer. Henry Nanabuachi, my brother, is also a lawyer. If you go into the National Council, whatever it is, you, the NPP is not in short supply of good lawyers in this country. Did the lawyers in the NPP and the advisors to the Executive Council pay attention to the provisions of Article 162? Uh, clause 4 that says editors and publishers of newspapers and other institutions of mass media shall not be subjected to control or interference by government nor shall they be penalized or harassed for their editorial opinions and views or the content of their publications. Did they pay attention to the provisions? Did they? And then they say, oh, there is not a fair representation and that the program has deviated. So you are trying to now dictate content, show run, running order, and who gets empaneled on the show? Was it not the same Socrates, Sappho, uh, and, and Fred J. Mensah, and all the other people who came together to form creative arts for change in this country? Were they not the same people who came together to form creative arts for change? And I showed you their picture. Banco Kreku and all those people. Now, if they were the ones who championed that cause, because their claim was that there's no direct policy that affects what they do within the media arts and culture space, and that they wanted some clarity on, on policy direction. And now, John Mahama and his administration set up the ministry. Nana Dodankwe Kufado Baumi have maintained the ministry, right? Are you suggesting to me that so Great Safo, who is a director at the National Commission on Culture, is not qualified enough, having practiced in this field of media and television and film for more than 20, 25 years, is not qualified enough to discuss a matter of policy on the platform of United Television. Is that the suggestion? That Fred J. Mensah, who, when I was a young man participating in bands alive, and even before then, who trained the likes of Apietus, etc., is not qualified enough to speak about policy. Now, what policies are we talking about? I will set up arts fund. I will set up studios in every region of the country. I will set up a, what, a platform that musicians can promote their music. I will set, set up amphitheaters. 
I will build an ultra modding, uh, whatever. Are these policies that these gentlemen cannot talk about? Mr. Logic is a sworn MPP person. And until recently, A plus himself is a sworn MPP person. So I want to ask the MPP a question. Is it that they think that the people who speak then, Dana Samoa is also part. In most cases, you will find about three MPP people, and you find maybe Bulldog, who is a confessed NDC person, or who is, seems to be an advocate of John Mahama. Now you have three against one. If they are not able to speak up, same way they come to do to us here, there's a spokesperson for government and every single institution in, in this country. But when they finish, they say, oh, those of us who are speaking truth to power, we should also advocate for government. I say, ah, you are paying people. Look at the presidency. You have over 15 communication, whatever. Paying them huge salaries. Some of them come on social media to talk no fun. They, su they support the rubbish that happened at PCF, uh, the UTV. They said they endorse it. And then when you finish, you come and tell us that we are the ones who are supposed to be trumpeting your thing. So I ask the MPP, hey, what is going on? Because you see, the strange thing is that when President Kufo was coming to power, the, 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 the clarion call was that the Jerry Rawlings era had some militarized, you know, attachment. People were being shaved with broken bottles, etc. All the narratives that were pushed out there. And that President Kufo was coming to give us, you know, some beam of hope and media freedom, etc., etc. Repeal of the criminal libel law. Yesterday I explained to you. you. You repeal the criminal libel law and yet your wife is spoken about and you use state resources and even take the person to court through the state. So you criminalize civil issues. You have not repealed any law if your actions are contrary to what you say you have repealed. Same things. So how did we depart from what President Kufu preached? Kufu, Jay, Kufu, all that era. How did we depart from all of that into this, this rowdy MPP that we now have? How did we depart from it? How did we get there? We have hoodlums who go on radio and TV and they budge into studios. How did we get there? <clears throat> now people are asking questions. Play Nancy Pelosi's video for me. Nancy Pelosi was the speaker of an equivalent of Alban Bagbin in the United States. He tore a speech by Donald Trump on national TV in the House of Parliament. Play. She did? She did. She did. A stunning moment here at the uh, end of the president's speech. Nancy Pelosi tearing up what appeared to be a copy of the president's speech. Wow. And this on the heels of a moment earlier where she seemed to offer her hand. She told that of the president who people are angry. Say A plus tore that letter. That was a copy of the letter, not the official one given to UTV. And in any case, if you read Article 162, the MPP was in no place to have written that letter to UTV. The same people who say, oh, we, we are... They, they, now the conversation has been turned from trying to criticize the people who wrote the letter under the direction of the national executive to say, we have a common problem of intolerance. This is the banner headline of the Finder newspaper. GJ got it all wrong. What does Kojo Upon Kruma, the Minister for Information, what is this business trying to fight the press? Now, Oliver, uh, indulge me. Play the last video for me. Kojo Upon Krumer's video. He said he will not be whipped into line. Now he appears he is leading the line. Play the video. There will be a bill on the table that we both realize doesn't make sense. And then, and then both of us will say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because <laughs> yeah. we are required to say, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, would, I, would, I would rather lose my seat any day than, 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 than be silly. For, for, for a political cause. Even that it's not just me, but I see a lot of people who share that view. That was Kojo Ponkruma. Then when he was looking to become forward to become MP for Fwansi Ayerbi. Today he's MP for Fwansi Ayerbi. He has been a cabinet minister, he's information minister. He's out of the country. And I'm sure people will send this to him and tell him about it and misquote me. He had no business fighting the press. 
Has he been able to criticize his own party for doing what they did? Has he told his national executive that what they did was nya? Has he been able to tell them? He should be able to tell them because he told us that he would not be whipped into line. The conversations now is, that are happening is that, oh, there's negativity and there's a general problem of intolerance, except who is not tolerant? You are the ones who are not tolerant. Because I used to do a similar thing of Johnny's bite under somebody else's administration. Nobody called me to threaten me. Nobody chased me. Nobody came to speak to my media organization. You are the ones going about attending to media organizations and actually dictating the content and who gets empaneled. And you say you are the beacons of hope. You are the doyens of democracy. What happened? What will BJ Darocha have done? What would Alajete have done? What would Victor Uswa have done? Would they have sat to see such a letter from a national executive written to a media house? Think about it. Good morning.